I was in Holland, and the posters were advertising this thing in Utrecht. And it said I was going to lead an evening of theatre sports. What does that mean? I mean, I don't know what that means. And I certainly wasn't going to do it, but it's, it's posted everywhere. So I had to do something else, and I had to find something for, I don't know, 26 actors or something, something mm -hmm. like that. Or if they wanted to do it, the students at the theatre school were going to perform. <clears throat> and it had to be unfair because there's a mixture of professional and non-professional. And so at breakfast, I said, I'm not going to do theatre sports. I, I had to invent something. So I invented this game. And we played it that night. Mm -hmm. And it was an elimination game. You keep throwing people off. Great. And you end up with one maestro. And you celebrate them and hug them and all that. So there's a... There's a it's about, on, it's about honoring the maestro. Yeah. And you create a lot of good feeling if all the guys who lost out to him run up to congratulate him on the stage at the end, which is important. Uh, and I, I haven't seen maestro for ages. You, I brought it back. I told Dennis I'd done this thing in Utrecht. And why didn't we try it for the first half? Because mm -hmm. we were doing theatre sports. And we, it went really well. I think we must have done it with about eight people, so it would just be an hour. And the next week we did not theatre, we did in the second half of theatre sports. And then we didn't do any theatre sports for years, and <laughs> we just played Maestro. Yeah. Because everybody liked it, and it, it's, it made them feel secure. It, you had two directors. And you have a mass of people. We had far too many, but you start with 15. And you do group scenes. So you can, at the end of every, end of the first round, you say, well, we're, in, we're just going to have an elimination. And then you look, no, we're not going to eliminate on this round. Is the audience gets to score at the end of the scene one to five. One to five. And then every person in that scene gets that, that point, that amount they of They all points. get the same point. They all get the same point. So you can be dragged down or dragged up according to who's in your group. Mm -hmm. And they're chosen at sort of at random. And it gets really interesting after the interval because then you're, and, and you feel good after the interval. Yeah. Because I'm still here <laughs> and they like me. Yeah. And then it often ends with some solo scenes, so it encourages solo work. Mm -hmm. And it certainly gives the audience a good time. I saw a maestro where one of the improvisers was a dog. All the way through? Um, no. The dog made it through to the second last round. He was a dog. Yeah, it was Chloe. It was Zach's dog, Chloe. It was given a number. He, he, he was in, he was, he came in as a... <laughs> As an improviser. Right. And so, so the directors would set up some sort of scene. <laughs> With and, a dog. Uh, yes, and then they put <laughs> Chloe in the, you know, it would be things that they would say things like, this is, you know, this is your gangster boss, and you're coming back to report on how the heist went or something. They were always short scenes, you know. Uh, and then a, lot, a bunch of the improvisers were really angry that they got the eliminated, and the dog made it almost to the end. <laughs> Well, I think it's a funny idea. Yeah. I think I would have discouraged it. Well, once is okay. Once, yeah, maybe well, once, once for the once, experiment. Once. And the dog's dead now, Bus, so I guess we can't. Yeah. Yeah, we had to forgive him. But <laughs> <laughs> I wish he'd won. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. But yeah. is this understandable? Have we explained it I right? Think so. Does that make sense to you, how it works? Yeah. You, el you eliminate groups mm -hmm. and then you but but you he, very difficult to, for the dog to win because he probably had to do a solo scene or at the end a hat game or something <laughs> i mean it would be difficult yeah uh -huh. and he doesn't know he's acting but mm -hmm. yeah you could have him as a ventriloquist oh someone did that yeah <laughs> I did. yes i think there was that there was someone did the, the thoughts of the dog 
you know. I should I should have seen this. Yeah. Anyway, Maestro is fun, but if you play it forever, it tends to make you too dependent on the judges. On the directors. On the directors, sorry. This was going to be my question, yeah. because I grew up doing theater sports, and I know a new generation who's never played theater sports, or rarely, and they've only played Maestro. And I wondered what the difference is. Maestro, you have to decide for yourself, mostly. Yeah. It's your decision. In theater sport. In theater sport, sorry. Yeah. In Maestro, the directors set up scenes for you. Mm -hmm. But I hear now they get, they're doing competing directors. I wish they wouldn't do that. Oh. I, I think the actors should be competing. Yeah, they're doing competing directors at Loose Moose or at other I, I don't know. I forget that somebody came as a rumor the other day. Right. I forget where I heard it, but I was a bit... So here's a question. Mm. You know, you, you at some point in your career, you meet Beckett and he... It does not want people... Um, he was uh, totally private. He's totally private. He didn't but want to change anything. He doesn't want to change anything. And then you create this form, so you, you have theater sports, and you have maestro, and, you, and it seems you've said as it gets away from you. I give advice, but I'm not like Becca. So, how, but I want to know how you feel about that. Like, well, that, that you create something, oh, and then people change I'm it. I'm really sorry, it all got stupid. They change it. They say, we change it for the local conditions, and they just made it safer. Yeah, someone told me there are some groups, instead of using a horn for boring, and they say, we don't use the horn because that's offensive to people, to the actors. So we have the pink shoe of salvation. That's a thing. What? Or it was in groups, like down south in the southern state. What does it mean? State. Well, instead of saying you're boring, we yeah. throw a pink shoe on we the stage. We don't say you're boring. We say warning for boring. Warning for boring, or we horn, we horn the scene. I put the horns in because they're, they're not offensive. Because you, these idiots honking you off the stage yeah. is not the same as saying, warning for boring. Right. And it's because it's a low status thing. Mm. So they probably got large, real car horns. Well, or the something. pink shoe of salvation is a thing, that, or it has been. But in it some does groups. sound totally pathetic. Yeah. And that was may, maybe when they first did it, they got a laugh. Yeah, maybe. And from then on, it's categorized as funny.